Hello everyone, welcome back to another Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous video. Before I get into this video, I just want to encourage you guys who haven't yet done so to subscribe to the channel because we have so many videos regarding Camp Cretaceous Season 1, Season 2 and also Season 3 and even the potential of Season 4 and 5. So if you are enjoying the Netflix TV show of Camp Cretaceous, why not subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to stay up to date on all of the videos and theories regarding Camp Cretaceous, especially with Season 3 coming soon. But in today's video, we are going to be discussing the genetic sequencing of what the Scorpius Rex, also known as E750, will be. Again, as a partial introduction to this video, I do want to say there will obviously be spoilers to Camp Cretaceous Season 3 and what exactly E750 is, so if you wish to avoid that, do click off the video and come back later. But for the people who already know, no. With the Scorpius Rex, I cannot show the original image we did have from the T-Rex Stomp and Roar. This is because Mattel have actually contacted me to remove that video and thus I have done so. So unfortunately I cannot show those images. However, out of my own pocket and out of my own money, I have paid a designer again to draw up exactly what we expect the Scorpius Rex to look like based on multiple conceptual designs. So I'm not saying this is what the final look of E750 will look like, however it's safe to say that it is going to be somewhere along these lines. So this is the image right here that my designer Axel was able to draw up for me and as you can see it looks incredible. Now today we are going to be breaking down this image and what we can kind of see what type of dinosaurs are in its structure and build. As for the first one, the first one I want to talk about are the claws of E750. As you can see the Scorpius's claws resemble very much of the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. As we know the Spinosaurus is in fact three clawed and I don't think it's inverted inwards either. I think it's straight exactly how the Scorpius Rex is showing it to be here. They are also proportionally a little bit larger than the body, so it does look a little bit odd. However, this can be because of the Spinosaurus DNA. So it is safe to say, because of also the images that we saw in Season 1 with Brooklyn, that the Spinosaurus is part of the genetic sequencing of the Scorpius Rex. And my bet is probably on the claws. The next image, still on the factor of claws, as you can see, is Velociraptor. We know that there will be a sick claw as you can see right there and that is very common in the dinosaurs that we know of dromaeosaurids obviously the most popular dromaeosaurid in the jurassic franchise is velociraptor so i think it's safe to say it will be velociraptor however with the potential of pyroraptor and deinonychus appearing in dominion there is still a possibility with those two dinosaurs being part of the dna sequencing just like rugops was and ferrazinosaurus was for the indominus rex we never saw them anywhere but they're still part of the dna makeup but so far we have Spinosaurus and Velociraptor. Now the next one is very interesting. I didn't really know exactly what to think of this until a behind the scenes look I've had of the concept design of the Scorpius Rex. I'm not going to reveal that image just to be on the safe side. However, it's safe to say the colorization on the back looks very strong indeed. And that is from what I assume. Now this can be very similar to silverfish or cuttlefish. You know, those animals actually have some plating on the back that look very similar. And likewise, I believe the Ankylosaurus does. So is this some form of Ankylosaurid for protection? Because looking at the images that I cannot show, it does look like that back of the Scorpius Rex is going to be very strong and potentially armoured. I'm not saying it is armoured, so that's why we have a question mark, but there is a chance that the Ankylosaurus, or any other Ankylosaurid, could even be Euploplocephalus, is part of the DNA sequencing for the Scorpius Rex, going from the top of the head all the way down the spine ridge to the end of the tail. So that is going to be really cool to see how it will defend against other predators. Again, we know this is kind of like a bluish greyish type of color. So I did get him to, you know, do the same colors and who knows, maybe because of the blue color is taking DNA from blue the Velociraptor. I just thought I'd uh, pop that in there for a little bit. Now the next one is where it's very interesting. According to the toy, apparently the tail is able to shoot out spikes that contain either venom or poison. I can't quite remember. And the only dinosaurs we know that have that is the soft cannon Truodon, which we don't know if it's properly cannon to be venomous or poisonous, but we do know in fact that the Compi is full of venom according to Darius in season two. Now obviously for the Compi to relieve its venom, I believe it's by biting. However, there is still a potential to extract that genome with the poison and then use it elsewhere on a genetically modified creature. So that's why they potentially could have poison or venom in its tail. Again, how do you shoot out spikes? Well, the only animal in today's world, you know, that I can kind of think of is a porcupine. It might be able to use porcupine spikes and you know, they'll stand up when necessary, when feel threatened and they'll be able to shoot them out. I believe there's an Australian animal called the uh, an, a 
Chilinda, something like that. I can't quite remember the name of it, but it's a little critter running around with obviously spikes on his back as well. So they could be taking modern day animals into the DNA sequencing as well. So could it be a Truodon, Compi, or Porcupine for its tail? If you know any other animal, because I've been <laughs> trying to find out some research about this, but if you know any animal that does actually have spikes on the end of its tail that's able to shoot it out somehow, then do let me know in the comment section down below because that's probably what the DNA sequencing will be. But as for now, my best three assumptions would be the Truodon, Compi, and a Porcupine. Now the next one, when you look at the skin, it does look a bit strong, a bit scaly, and I was thinking, you know, with Giganotosaurus being, a, I think, a partial genome of the Indominus Rex, and the Giga also appearing in Dominion, could it also be potentially there for the structure muscular build of the Scorpius Rex? From what I've seen, the Scorpius Rex is going to be a very strong dinosaur, but also nimble and agile. The best way to get a strong skin is from the assumptions that we have in modern day that the Giganotosaurus had really tough skin, as well as being one of the bulkiest and strongest dinosaur on the planet. So could that be a possibility in having the Giganotosaurus's genome added so it can be so it can have stronger skin accompanying the Ankylosaurus protection at the top and that way we can also introduce it further on with the Giga being in Dominion. That's rather interesting but I think that one's the most unlikely. The skin could be anything but for all we know my best bet is probably going to be the Giga. Now the next one is where it gets really really interesting for me personally. So we know that the skull doesn't look you know that normal and it, and it does look like it's been pushed in a little bit. So I originally thought the Carnotaurus because on the screen with Brooklyn where she was talking about E750 we do actually see the Carnotaurus appear on screen. So it seems like the Carnotaurus has potential to be part of the uh, sequencing for the Scorpius Rex. However, since we know it's called Scorpius Rex and Scorpion King, yes it could be referring to the stingers on the end of its tail, but what is another Abelisaurid similar to the Carnotaurus with a same skull? The Scorpiovenator. The Scorpiovenator, if we can find out the name in the TV show, would probably be the main factor as to why it's called Scorpius Rex, unless they actually do refer to the tail. The Scorpiovenator had a similar skull to the Carnotaurus being pushed in a little bit, very similar to the majority of Abelisaurids during its time, and it was also found in Patagonia. So could the skull either be Carnotaurus or Scorpiovenator? It could even be both, you know. And I am intrigued to see which way they go down. This would be an amazing way to introduce the Scorpiovenator to the Jurassic world franchise. Now up next, as we know it's called Scorpius Rex. Similar to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it does have King at the end of its name, but what if it actually didn't have T-Rex genome? So on the bottom half of the jaw that I have highlighted there, I have put Tyrannosaurus Rex because my best assumption is that this Scorpius Rex will indeed have an extremely strong bite force for its size. Now we know the Tyrannosaurus Rex had the strongest bite force of any living dinosaur ever discovered. So it's safe to say that if you were to get a similar bite force from the T-Rex genome and mash it down into a smaller, you know, Indoraptor type of size dinosaur, then we can definitely see a lot of havoc being wrapped by this dinosaur as well. So could the Scorpius Rex have stronger bite force than the majority of the carnivores on the island? I just thought that would be very interesting to see. However, that is the majority of things I am able to point out. Obviously, there are quills coming down of its elbow area, forearm, so it is interesting to see what type of dinosaur that's taken from. I believe the Indominus Rex also had that as well, so that's intriguing. However, that's the only thing that I can sort of describe and get a better understanding of what this Scorpius Rex is made of. So far, we have the idea that it's made of Giga, Velociraptor, Spinosaurus, T-Rex, Carnotaurus, Scorpiovenator, Ankylosaurus, and either Truodon, Compi, or porcupine. It is going to be interesting to see what this dinosaur is going to do in season 3 and hopefully because of the 10 episodes it's going to cause a lot of havoc. Now I know loads of you guys didn't actually like the look of the toy that we did see in the previous videos but I can assure you that once you do see eventually some concept art on this dinosaur it does look absolutely brilliant to say the least. Now I will show you this image here because it is proven fake but it's a you know concept idea of what Ludia could make for the Scorpius Rex in Jurassic World Alive. Now think of that, but in Camp Cretaceous. It's a lot better looking than the toy and it is very similar. It does look really nice and, you know, for somebody who doesn't like hybrids personally, I wouldn't mind seeing a Scorpius Rex appear in a future movie. I know that's probably not going to happen, I understand that, but personally for me, because of how nice it looks, that's kind of saying something. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to smash that like button and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below about the Scorpius Rex. 
But in the meantime, let's get excited for Season 3. Do smash that subscribe button as we get closer to 50,000 subscribers. And hopefully, I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you. Did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here, as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.